Hey everybody, I'm Bill Holland for GearWire.com, and I'm here with Kate Simcoe at Mosaic Music Studios. And right now we're looking at Logic, where you do most of your mastering for music, right? Yes, I do most of my mixing and mastering here at the studio, Mosaic Music in Chicago. This is also where I work as an assistant producer. And yeah, I work in Logic Audio with Waves plugins, and this is where I do my mixing. But now, this is where you're doing your mixing, mixing and mastering for your albums, but... We're going to look at Ableton, where you do all of your prep for doing a live PA. So let's move over to that right now. Basically, what I do is I create all of my music in Logic Audio, and I play all the different parts, and I bounce loops that are different lengths, maybe some 8 bars, some 16 bars, some 32 bars, some longer, some odd lengths. And then I bring them into Ableton Live, and I, you know, what I do is I try to get the levels correct as far as volume, and just mess around with it as far as trying to create an arrangement for the first time I'm going to play a song in a live setting. For example, here's a newer song where I have um, just a kick and a tom that are together. I don't know if you can hear it or not off these little laptop speakers. A kick and a tom and then I'll have on the next track some other kind of percussion and I'll go inside here. So inside here you can see that even when I have an audio loop that I've created in Logic, sometimes I'll go inside and, and decide that I don't like part of it and I'll take it down with volume just to make it a little bit more random sounding and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll bring everything in here from Logic, set it up different melodic components. This, for example, is a 32 bar loop, so that's longer. Just set it up and you know, at home, listen to it, pretend I'm in a live setting playing these different parts and do my best to set it up so that I feel com comfortable and confident that, you know, it's going to sound good and I can play it for at least, at least, you know, to start three, four minutes and, and when I'm playing live, then that's like the second part of my process. You know, the way that I work with it, everything is in its separate part, you know, snare is separate from kick, separate from tom, separate from pads from bass and so when I'm playing live I, I see what people are reacting to positively and negatively and that's kind of how the song ends up in its final form. It seems like it's much more intuitive to compare it to someone who might be a singer-songwriter or somebody doing more song-based electronic music would work with this. But let's go back to the studio and we'll come back and talk about that second part you were talking about after this. <laughs> 